Hello guys, welcome to brand new video tutorial series on netstrikers.com for ASP.NET MVC interview video question and answer series. Now, in this video, we are going to encounter one of the most common interview question that an interviewer may ask if you are planning for a job as an ASP.NET MVC developer. Either you are planning for a, a startup job or you are planning for an MNC. This question may get asked and it is one of the most frequent question which has been asked by an interview in the past decade. So let's get started. Now the question for the interview question series one is that can you explain the MVC pipeline or can you explain the SP.NET MVC pipeline or an interviewer may ask that can you explain the request lifecycle of the SP.NET MVC. Now almost mo I have encountered a lot of interview and I have seen most of the interviewer used to uh, mark this question as their favorite one because that can simply depict that the interviewer which uh, who is uh, giving an interview uh, how much uh, better knowledge that he does he possess either he is a fresher or an experienced so this is the one of the most important question that you must prepare for and uh, by the end of the video we are going to learn each uh, aspect which regards to ASP.NET MVC pipeline or the ASP.NET MVC lifecycle. So let's get started. Now the lifecycle of the ASP.NET MVC is a series of steps well which are involved in processing the client request. Well regardless of any technology or any web framework you have uh, used or you have seen well every web framework or every technology consists of request lifecycle and MVC is no such different. Now understanding the life cycle of uh, any web framework will help us to better leverage the features or better understand how the things literally work rather than just doing the thing uh, like CRUD operation. Now as a developer or if you want to be an architect or if you want to be a good developer then you must understand how things work rather than just doing the things. Now in this video I'm going to explain what happens in ASP.NET MVC request lifecycle and what each step in the lifecycle does and how we can leverage it. Further based on our needs, this video is targeted on the page lifecycle which is different from the application lifecycle because a typical lifecycle of the application lifecycle contains the application start and the application end event. However, HTTP lifecycle is something which is repeated for every request. Since application events are also the part of the life cycle, so we will see them as we move along. Now let's encounter the MVC request life cycle. So in this video we are going to encounter only the SP.NET MVC life cycle. So it is uh, quite different when we talk about the Java life cycle or any other uh, uh, web framework or the technology life cycle which uses the MVC. So we are going to learn about the SP.NET MVC life cycle. So the entry point of ASP.NET MVC request lifecycle uh, is the URL routing module. That is the incoming request from the IAS pipeline or the internet information server pipeline is handed over to the URL routing module which analyzes the request and looks up for the routing table to figure out which controller is the incoming request is maps to. Now the routing table is a static container of routes defined in ASP.NET MVC application with corresponding controller and with the action mapping. Now if the route is found in the route ta routing table, the MVC route handler executes and brings the instance of ASP.NET MVC HTTP handlers. Together they are acting as a gateway to the ASP.NET MVC framework. Now the MVC handler begins initialization, initialization and execution of the controller. Now whereas the HTTP handlers or the MVC HTTP handlers also takes on converting the route data into the concrete controller thus capable of uh, serving the request. ASP.NET MVC handler does all this with the help of ASP.NET MVC controller factory and activators by responsible for creating an instance of the controller. This is also the place where the dependency injection is performed if the application has been designed to invoke the parameterized controller constructor to satisfy its dependency. Well, after the controller instance is created, the next major step is to find and execute the con corresponding action. Well, we have a component called as action invoker whose task is to find and execute the action defined in the routing table. Well, before the action method is called, uh, the model binding take place, which help us to map data from HTTP request 
and maps it to the action method parameters. Now, after the execution of uh, after the model binding action filters are executed, which are executed two times. That is before the action has been executed, that is on action executing, and after the action has been executed, that is on action executed. Now, once the action method has been finished executing, the next step is the result execution. Now, MVC separates the action declaration from result execution. So, if the uh, result from uh, from action execution is view, that is an, a view or page that a developer uh, or a user may see, then depending upon the configuration, whether it is an ASPX view engine or the Razor view engine, uh, it will be called according uh, to the configuration made by the developer. and uh, in, it renders the HTML view as a response of the HTTP request. But if the result was not a view, then it is passed as an HTTP response, which is which could be JSON or anything like uh, uh, anything like uh, HTTP request, uh, HTTP response. So uh, I hope you understand this uh, life cycle. This is a very simple video tutorial. Well, uh, we are going to encounter most of the questions uh, which are asked in the interview and uh, we are going to solve each one by one so i hope you liked it and if you have any suggestions or if you have any doubts please do let me ask in the youtube comment section because your suggestions are always welcome and once again i would like to thank you for your support and uh, until then enjoy life bye bye happy coding